Six, 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 six. So I started realizing something. Thank you very much. something that it, the reason I never had a number one hit song was not because of my words it was because I didn't play the right chords so tonight I want you guys to help me live a dream that I've never had I wrote my own number one song and I'm gonna do it to the Coldplay chords because apparently that's the right answer so I'm gonna say a title of a song that I know you don't know but I want you to pretend like it's all real all right so yeah this next when I say the title of the song like lose your mind this next song, I promised myself I would never play it again. But if we could go back in time just once, you may remember this one from back in the day. I know I do. No way. It's called OTPHJ. I just over, like, gravy the pedal. All right, there we go, we'll do it again. This next song you may remember, it's called OTPHJ. Yeah. 
What's up, bro? How does homosexuality help us win the culture war? How does homosexuality help us win the culture war? It doesn't. You know, the thing about sodomy, they, you know, I joke about it a lot, but there's some real aspects to this. Sodomy and usury, there's a reason they're in the same level of hell at Dante's Inferno. It's because, as the great Michael Jones said, it, it takes that which is fertile and makes it sterile, and that which is sterile and makes it fertile. There's a reason that it's bad, and it's not because, you know, I can't have gay friends or like, what, that, that's such a nonsense argument. It's because it's taking the act of life creation and making it sterile, and then right. fiat currency is taking that which is dead and giving it fake life. Right. And they're in the same binary together creating evil. Yeah. And I'm not blaming the homosexual in, in a sense. I'm blaming the evangelical homosexuals where it's like, everyone should be like me. I can't stand those people. It's, it's one thing if someone's brain's wired a little wacky and they're like, hey man, I just, you know, I'm into this shit. And I'm like, all right, buddy. We can still be buddies, just don't ever bring it up around anybody I care about. Uh, <laughs> but it's the ones that are like, oh, vaginas are disgusting. Like, you're gross. Like, every, like vaginas are gross. I'm like, you want, you really want to do this? <laughs> I, mean, I, I don't want to get graphic because I think there might be some kids in the, in the room, but vaginas are not gross and assholes are insanely disgusting. <laughs> like, you know, fertile sex makes life, which is great, and sodomy makes fake AIDS and death. <laughs> <laughs> What's up? Hey, we both love Good Flatter. I can get that. But, but I watch Gilligan's Island every year for like five years after school. You're telling me there's no quicksand. <laughs> <laughs> no, quicksand was a bitch. Why don't it's a bitch for people? It's dinosaurs. Uh. That one hurt. That hurt way more than the globe for me. Yeah. Like to find out that uh, dinosaurs were a Smithsonian live from in the Royal Society from like the 1840s. It's all nonsense. Like, literally fucking nonsense. Yeah. That hurt. I was like, you know, I'm 39 wearing my, my dino, dinosaur PJs. Like, what? <laughs> no, but quicksand isn't real either. It's, and, and by the way, being my size, quicksand is extra horrifying because it's 6 to 8 and would take an absurd amount of time. <laughs> so I'd be in quicksand like, oh no! And I'd be like three hours later, I'm like, How have I overcome censorship? You have to, it's not a fight between you and these converged nonsense companies, it's a fight between you and yourself. Because you can be, I've been kicked off every day, demonetized, all that. All it did, like, so I was making, like, briefly making a lot of fake, sterile money on YouTube, <laughs> and they demonetized me, and at that point I had come, I'd, I'd seen the evil that is the Babylonian magic square of, of the fiat, uh, and people just started mailing me silver and seeds and shit. And it was great. No, it's, it, me and Dave Weiss were talking about this. It's, it, we call it crumbling upwards. Where it's like every time you think that they've shooken you and taken something from you, you realize that they just backed you into a better pasture. <laughs> you know, it's like, uh, censorship is all a battle between you and yourself. The, the time when censorship happens is when you hesitate out of fear. That's it. And it's like, I have a song called That Nigger Stole My Bike, and I don't call black people that. You know, it's, I did once when I was nine and someone stole my bike, it was black. But like, I did that song because I wanted to do a joke with a word in it that was so taboo. Okay, the N-word is absurd. If you ever say the N-word, you, you've cucked yourself. Because I will argue right now that necrophilia is infinitely more offensive than nigger. That's sex with dead bodies. So when someone, if someone's like, oh, that nigger stole my bike, it's like, hey man, my neighbor's cousin's mailman is black. And I'm like, dude, I know a guy that died and someone fucked him. <laughs> it's pretty profound. It'll take a little while to think about that, but it's, it's, it's nonsense. And it's also this bizarre notion that you can take a black person's autonomy by uttering a word like fucking like a wizard. It's bizarrely inverse. Like the, the concept of saying N-word is, mo is more this concept of racist than not saying N-word. 
It's the exact opposite. It's, it's treating black people like children, like they can't handle a word. It's fucking insane. And I will, and so I wouldn't just rant about it and do jokes like Louis C.K. would do a joke about the word. I wanted to do a joke with the word in it where I didn't make it about whether or not I'm allowed to say it or not. And I just took the arrows for it. And I'm glad I did. And that was an element of censorship fighting where it's like, I won't, I won't censor myself based on nonsense. Because once you do, you lose your word, your logos. And never give that up. Let, let, them, let them kill your YouTube channels. Let them kick you out of clubs. I, I used to have, because my fancy pants and lollipops, everyone has a, a satanic Achilles, right? Mine was never money. It was, uh, I liked the status I had at the Hollywood Improv. They painted me in the mural. I was hanging on the wall like a conquering gladiator. And I could walk in there any night of the week, and famous people would, would be like, hey man, I can't wait to see your new jokes and stuff. They took down my picture. They, they, you know, persona not brought at me because of my stance against trans child abuse, you know, the child abuse, which is trans children. And they called me all these names, all that stuff. And that did hurt. But once I realized that that's all a nonsense loop, it never ends, then you're free. They're, they're, they're literally kicking you out of hell. And when people, it's one thing if you're at the dinner table and you're like, admit it's flat, Grandma! Like, <laughs> But if they disown you or don't want to be your friend because they find out that you, that you have realized that we're not on a spinning globe, it's on them, not you. And, and, and they can come back. I've seen them come back. I've seen them apologize. So don't, you know, it, there's a lot of forgiveness involved in this. Like getting angry at people for believing what you believed five years ago is an Achilles heel of this community that I've experienced, you've experienced. You know, it's like, Fuck you, Globe Tart! It's like, are you talking to a mirror from five years ago? You know, like, are you in Dante's Inferno? And so that's my advice, because a lot of people come up to me and say, like, I inadvertently woke people, a lot of people up to the, the Globe Live because of how I did it wasn't like, you're so stupid if you don't see it. And I was showing my vulnerability. I was showing, like, I don't want to be a flat earther. I don't want to do this. I want to win. I want to stay on the side of the normal people. And then eventually I had to face reality, and that's it. Nice. Oh, what up? You in the back. Is the Flat Earth Conference the best thing I've ever been to? Yeah. No, but it's, it's, very, it's the best conference I've ever been to. And that's a fact. It's like, like I slept a lot during the day today because I had gravy overload last night. Like I'm talking to people, one guy created a Tesla coil, someone else is telling me about how everything's electricity. I'm literally just like, yeah. Weiss comes out of nowhere, he's like, dude, Libya head aqua first. I'm like, yeah. And so, it's just, that's like heaven to me. But it does get, I do need to recharge, I'm a giant. <laughs> what, what's up? Bigfoot's real? As a giant, I do not appreciate. I know, I'm just kidding. Um, I don't think Bigfoot's real. Uh, no, I mean, I just don't. I just. I, like, there's. All the evidence in the world says the Earth is not a spinning ball. Bigfoot is a jump. I, here's the uh, irony about me I don't really take a lot of jumps unless I see a lot of evidence. You are I am Bigfoot. That's why I've never seen him. <laughs> I'm always looking for Bigfoot. Everyone's like, Bigfoot. And I'm like, where is he? <laughs> I, the whole time it's almost like the sixth sense. Like I was the dead guy the whole time. Like, it turns out, I'm like, Bigfoot isn't real. And everyone's like, uh, Bigfoot, that whole bunch of, oh, you know, like Japanese people. <laughs> that, that'd be hysterical if it turned out I was actually Bigfoot. The people just keep taking pictures of me in the wilderness. <laughs> How's your wife though? How's my wife though? She she's so grounded. You know, she doesn't care. I mean she cares about what she cares about my happiness. So she's like, you know, do you want to talk about Antarctica for a bit? I'm like, is that okay? And she's like, yeah, we can talk about Antarctica. Uh, but she's now you know, it's not her passion. Her passion is our kids and the animals and, and, and she's, she's 
she never was uncomfortable about any of this. I mean, she married me. <laughs> like, you know, as I was getting kicked out of Hollywood, Vice News said that I had a brain worm. You know, so I've been in this a while, man. I don't. She doesn't give a shit about what people say about me. She loves me, so it's like. And she's not. On, she doesn't care about online shit. Thanks. Does what? Do you guys know about David Weiss's app? By the way, give it up for David Weiss. David Weiss. David Weiss devised Jew powers of marketing and app making, and he made it selfless. He's the selfless Jew. He really is. He's not doing it like once I really except I, I got some pretty decent antenna for people. Once I realized he, he was really he's passionately trying to show people this world. And the app is an incredible way to do that. And once I it was so funny seeing all his Jew powers of marketing and app making, but none of it was out of greed. You know, he's a unicorn. <laughs> so one more time for Dave Weiss. Any other questions? Where do you live? Where do I live? That's being a little aggressive, gay guy. <laughs> you know, I live in Washington State. Yeah! Yeah, I, it's a beautiful state outside of Seattle. You know, like we're far outside of Seattle, but it's a, it's a, it's a great place. A lot of rain, a lot of green. You know, according, according to some gravy I, uh, I heard last night, it's like a really good place for electromagnetism. <laughs> What, what do I think about rainbows? Six colors or seven? <laughs> you know what I'm saying. Uh, the seven colored rainbow is God's promise, and the six colored rainbow is the inversion that's based around Sodom. Uh, what else? Oh, and when is your book coming out? How to Kill Wizards? How to Slay a Wizard? I'm working on it right now. It'll be out within the year. Because my father taught uh, persuasion, public speech, mass communication, which I now realize is brainwashing, you know? And, uh, and I, my dad's a complicated figure, and I know, you know, my whole childhood, he'd, he'd teach me all this stuff. Like, I'd take college level tests when I was like eight, nine years old, and, and I saw the, you know, he's a wizard teacher, but and it, I saw what it did to him, and I still have a love for him, but he's has a lot of problems. And I want to, uh, to honor my father, because that's one part about the Bible that, uh, I, I used to have problems with was honor honor your parents, you know, and I, it's easy to honor my mother, but my father's a, a bit harder. But I think the way I can honor him is to teach other people how to see through uh, the Tavistocki and brainwashing right. that is being taught at college campuses. Honor him by being the best man he can be. Tesla what? I mean, I'm mean, Tesla. Legend. Legend. Uh, and, uh, I, think, I think Edison was a great work. Yep. He was always doing this. <laughs> was that? Since realizing the earth is flat, what's the most mind blowing thing that you've also realized? Since realizing the earth is flat, what's the most mind blowing thing I've also realized? I think that. Dinosaurs? No, let me think for a second. Vaccines! Uh, Pokemon! I, yeah, nuclear bombs. I think, I think nuclear bombs being fake. And, and this, is the, this is the coolest part, is every single one of them, except for dinosaurs, lowered my fear and anxiety. You know, like, when you find out how many, you know, like, NASA and Stephen Hawking and all these people, they sound identical to an abusive spouse, where it's like, you are small, you are nothing, you are insignificant, don't leave me. <laughs> That's what they're doing, they're like, look at the Milky Way, it's like, all more grains of sand than all the beaches in the world. And you're just a speck, and you're just made because bacteria are fucked. And then they fucked and mutated, and they got and they mutated and fucked, and you're just gonna die. Like literally, when you see it, it's like the, the beast that they are. They might as well be doing this. <sighs> you are nothing. You are not made by God. You are just a mistake that will be corrected. I'm just like fuck that guy. And I think that's one thing that I bring to the flat community is a lot of you guys are just really earthy, nice people. Alpha dog to just be like, fuck you people. <laughs> because a lot of you guys will just take the shaming and not say anything back. And people are like, oh, how dare you? You're stupid. You're so ignorant. And I don't think a lot of you guys know that you can not. The two streets that you've been given is Savanye being like, I'm the real king. Everyone sucks but me. Or just being meek. 
like being too like, just take it. It's like, no, stand your ground. You know, stand your ground and explain it to people and just say, I'm not going anywhere. I'm not going to change. This is how I see the world. Look around. It ain't moving, bitch. <laughs> Where I think Joe Rogan was on a good, like not a good path, but he was on a path of like, I'm gonna say whatever I want, and I'm gonna say shit that's intriguing, and that's why I used to listen to him. And then he got to a point where I think he was signing deals. He was getting the, the millions from Netflix, millions from this, and people don't realize how much you have to give up for those development deals. You know, when I was on uh, a famous, like a very highly watched sitcom. I made more money in one week than a lot of teachers will make in a year. And so, I didn't have a problem giving that up because for whatever reason, I just, I don't know. Money never really did it for me because some of my happiest memories were while well, we were very poor. So I never, I, I have my flaws, I have my weaknesses, I have my sins, but that one never was one of them. I think a guy like Joe Rogan has his appetites and he's been uh, fed for so long that someone said to him, I don't think he was threatened, I don't think it was like CIA threatening him with a dossier. I think it was just like, if you want your wowies and your fancies, if you want your sodomy behind the dumpsters, you're gonna have to keep saying what you said, like watch yourself. Because I've had handlers. I didn't know they were handlers, I thought they were just called agents. You know, where they basically say like, oh, we got a call, you might wanna pump the brakes on. <laughs> One time I had a development deal with Disney, and I pointed out that, that uh, what was it? What, what was that, the Ebola virus looked exactly like the Disney ears, like the Mickey ears? And I, I posted that on my Facebook back in the day, and Disney had just paid me like $75,000 to be exclusive with me, you know? And I was like, dude, Ebola looks just like the devil mouse. And my, <laughs> and my agent was like, you gotta take it down. I'm like, fuck no. I'm like, they'll think, this is how naive I was. I was like, they'll think it's hilarious. Those guys are great. Because I go to these meetings and everybody's high-fiving me and being like, we saw, you know, we saw you do stand-up and you're so good. Oh, and I'm like, yeah, these dudes are trash. And then, and then I was like, no, they'll love it. And then when you don't take it down, they're like, yeah, they, uh, they don't want to renew. And I'm like, was it, did they get Ebola? <laughs> That's a true story. Look at the Ebola thing. It's a fucking Mickey Mouse ears. Because this is, this is a catch-22 with a guy like me, is what makes me so funny and what makes me marketable is the very thing that makes it not controllable. <laughs> We're like, the thing that makes me crush at the Hollywood Improv is the very thing that I, I can't do both. I can't be like, oh, I'll censor and lie in this area, but not this area. Because when you're on a stage and somebody fucking sets you up with, you know, Cosmo soundtrack musical on the keyboard, you have to trust your instincts to be able to adapt. And if you're a liar, you can't. Because you keep losing those microseconds of like, can I say this? Will I get the fancies? You have to be in the moment. And so that's why I've been hired so many times, almost as like this culture.